In this video, I want to talk about MVX, which is Metabolic Vulnerability Index, and how it's the most important test to figure out how long you're going to live. It's not LDL cholesterol. It's not ApoB. These are factors that do not predict very well how long you're going to live. Some people say that it's your VO2 max, like how good are your lungs, how fit are you, how far can you run, what's your grip strength, how strong are your muscles, how many push-ups you can do, how long your telomere length is in your cells, in your mitochondria. These are not factors to predict longevity that are very uh, reliable or very uh, predictive as compared to MVX. MVX is a blood test. It's a series of six factors in a sample of blood. And this is not yet available, although it's been run on thousands of people and very well studied. And you get these six factors run and you get a score on a scale of zero to 100. If your score is zero, you're going to die pretty soon. If your score is 100, you're going to live well beyond five years. So what are these six factors and how can you reverse them if they're off? I figured this out just recently and nobody knows this. I don't think anybody knows this, but I figured it out. So here's the six factors. Three of them are amino acids. So we have leucine, isoleucine, and valine. We'll talk about those in a, in a moment. And there's three more factors. One is citrate. Another one's called glyc A. And the last one, small HDL particles. So let's talk about these three amino acids first. So here's the problem. When they're too high in your blood, that indicates that your body is not digesting protein very well, amino acids. And these three, when high, prevent the liver from cleaning fat out of itself. You end up with a fatty liver when those three amino acids are too high. Fatty liver is the basis of metabolic syndrome. We're talking about visceral fat in the body causing diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure. That is centralized along this concept of fatty liver. If you can clean the fatty liver out, if you can clean the fat out of the liver, then that means that you can clean the fat out of your arteries, out of your pancreas, out of your omentum, which is like, you know, the natural fat that's right here. You don't want that to be excessive. When you have fat here, that means that your body's treating it like an infection. You have high inflammation. And a lot of doctors say inflammation is a cause of disease, but it's not. It's actually uh, step two out of the four steps of healing. So inflammation just means your tr body's trying to heal, but it can't. So you have to fix up the factors that are preventing it from healing. So you take a nutrient to bring down these three amino acids. And that nutrient is vitamin B1. B is in boy. Now also, don't forget to eat a low-carb ketogenic diet because that helps get fat out of your body. You know, it squeezes fat out of the cells, transports the flat fat into your blood, and then circulates around and it's used as energy instead of sugar. So the ketogenic diet is very important for this. And But at the very least, um, lose weight in whatever way that you know how best to lose weight. But take the vitamin B1 to bring down these three amino acids and that can help your liver clean itself out and start to reverse metabolic syndrome. This is a big deal and I've seen this several times now in various videos and medical literature. It's vitamin B1 and nobody talks about this. Next, I want to talk about small HDL particles. So when you talk about lipids like cholesterol, etc., it's it's more than just cholesterol, LDL, and HDL. So for example, when you take the LDL score, it's actually a compilation of various particles that includes large fluffy LDLs, which are healthy, quote unquote healthy, and small dense LDL particles, which are supposedly the bad ones. And there's also lipoprotein A wrapped up in that one lab marker called LDL. So there's also HDL, large particles and small particles. So if you, HDL is supposedly the healthy uh, lipoprotein cholesterol carrying package. But the point is, if you have a high number of small HDL particles, that's one of the six factors of MVX. So how do you reverse that? Well, again, fix up your lipids and raise your HDL, the healthy HDL, with a low-carb keto diet. I just had a patient raise his HDL from 37 to 51 in five months by doing a low-carb meat-based diet. This will fix up his 
small HDL particle count. It'll also fix up the large HDL particle count. If it's you know too high, too low, a low carb meat based diet fixes that HDL particle count. That's how you fix that. Now you can also add a supplement, niacin, vitamin B3. So niacin can fix up that fourth aspect of MVX, the small HDL particle count. Now there's two more left in MVX, the single most important test to predict your longevity and your health, not yet available. The last two are glyca and citrate. Let's talk about glyca next. So glyca is a measurement of inflammation and it's a compilation of inflammatory markers. This includes fibrinogen, C-reactive protein, and other aspects. Now, it also includes two factors related to your immune system, neutrophils and leukocytes. So glyca is a measurement of inflammation and your immune system. Now, when your immune system is active, killing off organisms, now you have a battle inside your body and you get inflammation because your body's trying to heal. I mentioned earlier, inflammation is step two of the four steps of healing. So what do you have to do to bring down glyca? The answer is kill off all the organisms in your body. No matter where they are or what they are, you have to fix that. So I did a video in the fall of 2023 and it's entitled Eliminate All Your Organisms in Order to Live Longer, something like that. I'll put it right here. And I have a whole list of organisms and possible infections that you're carrying around that your doctor is dismissing or maybe only giving you steroids for it. Any kind of skin rash, toenail problem, chronic bronchitis, allergies, runny nose, sinus trouble. You can have bloating in the gut, that's candida. These can be viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungus, mold, and these problems need to be cleaned up. And medicine does not do a very good job at this at all because you don't want to just take antibiotics for two years and then an antiviral and then an antifungal drug. The, all these drugs poison your body and they may be beneficial, but the point is there's herbs that are excellent for this job and you want to fix up your tissues because when you have weak tissues and poor unhealthy tissues, they die. And these organisms eat the dead tissue. So you have to have a healthy body. That's the terrain, according to uh, even Louis Pasteur, supposedly admitted on his deathbed, that it's not about the organism, it's more about the terrain of your body. So get your body really healthy, and these organisms go away. And in the meantime, if maybe you need some oregano, some wormwood, you need some uh, drainage products to make sure you're cleaning up all the mucus and the biofilm and drying out your sinuses, and I have many videos about this and I have courses about this and this is a big subject. And this is where the naturopaths come in, the holistic nutritionists, the chiropractors that are holistic and they use nutrition so they could possibly help you out and fix up all of these um, possible infections throughout your body. Now, the last of the six factors in MVX is called citrate. Citrate is the very first step in the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria. And if you don't have citrate, the mitochondria are not going to work very well. So let's say you have a lot of toxins that build up in the outer membrane of your cells or the membranes of your, of your mitochondria that can prevent citrate from going into the mitochondria. So high citrate on a blood test is a bad thing. You want to have that citrate being used. And in the medical research, it shows how do you lower citrate in your blood test? The answer is detox. It's, it's the metals, it's arsenic, mercury, tin, lead. This video is brought to you by my office. We use new and old clinical discoveries, solving complex chronic illnesses using only diet and supplements. We have this fantastic building. We have multiple practitioners. We do local and distance consultations. We help you improve your health as opposed to just squashing symptoms. And we have a variety of opportunities for you to get involved. We have eBooks and courses that are free. We have eBooks and courses that are paid for. I have my large seven-step blueprint to optimal health online course, which walks you through the seven-step blueprint to optimal health. And you have access to all the supplements at patient pricing. My book is available on Kindle. If you want to buy supplements from my office, we have this store, which is for patients only. And we have this store, which is for everybody else. But if you just want to jump into direct care immediately, just contact the office directly. Those are the factors that keep your citrate 
up in your blood and not into your cells and into your mitochondria. The research also shows that you could supply cofactors such as sulfur, iron, and other minerals, for example, that are needed by the mitochondria to work. The Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, all the machinery within the mitochondria needs 22 nutrients. So those are the cofactors. It's The medical literature says detox and supply nutrients to get the mitochondria going, then your citrate level comes down. So let me just recap this. Vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, handles three of the six factors. Vitamin B3, also known as niacin, plus a low-carb keto diet, handles the small HDL particles to fix glyca, clean up all the infections, and to fix citrate, clean up all the toxins, and then add nutrition. This MVX was released to the public in February of 2023 in a research article, and then I first found it from a fantastic video from Dr. Bill Cromwell. I'll put that right here. And I think this is the best video on all of YouTube. I watched it six or eight times, and it actually explains what I've been talking about for eight years. And it explains it in a way that I completely understand. I'm able to figure out you know, how to reverse the MVX score. It's in my book, how to actually reverse it. I don't mention MVX here. As a matter of fact, I need to add a chapter, I think. And I also want to recap what I said at the very beginning. Okay, MVX predicts longevity better than any other blood test, better than LDL cholesterol and ApoB, lipoprotein A, grip strength, muscle strength, VO2 max, fitness, how many push-ups can you do? None of that matters compared to MVX. But we don't have MVX available to us yet. So in the meantime, you have to look at all these factors as a big compilation. You can't just focus on LDL. And this is the demise of standard cardiology. And they're very upset about this. There's also Dave Feldman, who had a scientific consortium conference a few months ago. And these seminars coming out of that uh, symposium are absolutely fantastic. And they're showing that people in ketosis do not have a correlation between placking and their LDL particle count. There's also no correlation between placking and the small dense LDL, the so-called worst LDL particle. Also, there's no correlation between placking and lipoprotein A or oxidized phospholipids. These are formally known as inflammatory um, blood markers that cause heart disease. But in people in ketosis and uh, doing exercise, their metabolism is excellent, and these lipids are like off the charts, but yet they have the same amount or less placking, whether it's calcified or not, compared to people with lower LDL of the same group, same weight, same age. So you can't be afraid of LDL as being the cause of heart disease. Now, if you're on a junk food diet, that's a cause of heart disease. If you have an infection, that's a cause of heart disease. If you're deficient in B1, that's a cause of heart disease. There are many causes of heart disease. LDL cholesterol is not one of them. LDL cholesterol is a pretty good marker if you're on a junk food diet. But it's not a good marker if you're on a ketogenic diet. This year, 2024, we're seeing the destruction of the cardiology profession. And they are pissed off and they are fighting tooth and nail to maintain this fantasy that LDL is the cause of heart disease. And all I got to do is a vegan diet and a statin drug. And when that fails, you get a stent. There's so much more to it. It's a metabolic problem. Clean up your diet, get into ketosis, cycle in and out of ketosis, clean up all the infections and clean up all the toxins. I've been doing this to some degree my whole career. And in 2016, when I figured out lactic acidosis as the most common mechanism of chronic disease, it all came together. And this is where it's at. This is how you increase your health. This is how you get rid of the scary dysfunctional metabolism and altered biochemistry that makes your tissues fall apart, that makes your mucus build up and then calcify, that makes your nervous system weak and dysfunctional, therefore causing digestive problems and other um, heart problems. There's just way more to it than LDL cholesterol. When I picture a standard heart patient, it's a male, overweight, bloated, sensitive to carbs, white coating on their tongue, fatigue, maybe some depression. That's how I picture a standard 
heart disease patient. Is it all caused by LDL? Absolutely not. When they take a statin drug, does that cure them? Absolutely not. The statin drug is anticoagulant, which is great. It's anti-inflammatory, which can be beneficial. But lowering LDL, it's been shown, is not the healthy factor that the cardiologists have thought since the 1980s. And that's been proven now and disseminated here in 2024. And I'll show a video right here from Dr. David Diamond talking about that. So this video has been pretty quick. It's only been 20 minutes or so, but it's really the culmination of my 30 year career, plus my awesome discoveries from these old books from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, and plus the greatest, newest discoveries as disseminated through the uh, conference that Dave Feldman held in the summer of 2024. And he put all this together and it just makes sense. And I can see this with my patients for example, we've put about 200 people on vitamin B1 in the last three months, and it's been the absolute greatest vitamin that I've ever worked with. And it's so vital to reduce MVX. Those three amino acids have to come down by taking vitamin B1. So not only is the medical literature backing up what I'm saying, plus my clinical experience has shown to me personally the benefit that, of what I've been learning through the medical literature. So at some point we'll have to hold a funeral for all the statin pushers and the cardiologists that are promoting a low meat or no meat diet. And we have to uplift the holistic practitioners that are encompassing all aspects of healing. So I created the seven step blueprint to optimal health. The last step is actually step O for optimization. So you're cleaning the body out uh, through steps three through seven, and you're preparing for that cleaning in steps one and two. And then step O is optimization. So you're feeding the organs specific nutrients. And I created this graphic, I don't know, five years ago or something. And I have not been able to see any need for changing it. And people have challenged me on this in a friendly way. And I'm trying to think like, what should I add? What should I d delete? There's nothing to add or delete because it gets to the cause greater than any other philosophy that I've seen in the last 30 years. So I hope you enjoyed this information. I'd like you to share this information with other people so they, they can learn this information and they don't get duped by uh, drug pushers. But at the same time, you need to find the good doctors who are holistic and can actually repair the body instead of drugging it. Okay, I'll see you at the next video.